Last time we searched for cooking videos in YouTube using the YouTube API and because most cooking videos don't list the ingredients and the instructions, we use Gemini Pro to extract the recipe from the videos. Now I want to save those recipes into ChromaDB. Okay, let's head back up to the top of the file. Let's get ChromaDB installed. During the installation, you might see some errors, but it doesn't interfere with the functionality of ChromaDB, so we can ignore it. Now let's import ChromaDB and also the sentence transformers. Run this. Okay. Over here, I'm going to create my Chroma client. We need to save the database into our Google Drive. So go over to the Files tab and mount Google Drive. Google Drive is loaded. Let's go down to our project folder. In here, I'm going to create a new folder. I'll call it DB. And this is where I want to store my Chroma DB files. I'm going to copy the path and pass that into the Chroma DB function. The first time that this is run, it will create the database container inside the DB folder. Let's do that. Okay, let me refresh. You can see that Chroma DB is using a SQLite database as a container. Now let me declare the sentence transformer. The sentence transformer is what's going to help us embed any text that we want to insert into the database. The model that we're using is this one over here. You can follow this URL to see what other models there are. Now within our database container, I want to create my actual database. They're calling it a collection. I'm going to name it recipe DB. And the second parameter is the embedding function, which is what I have here. So now whenever I insert an entry into this database, it's going to use this function to convert the text into embedding. And the first time I run it, it's going to create this recipe DB. The second time I run it, it will just load it. I'll run it. It's going to go and download all the necessary files for Chroma DB to operate. If I run it again, it shouldn't have to download this stuff again, okay? Okay, now in my display YouTube results function, this is where I look through the search results and display the video ID, the title, embed the video in Colab so I can play it. And down here, I'm extracting the video transcript, sending it to Gemini Pro and extracting the recipe here. So in here, I want to save some video information so that I can use it to save to ChromaDB. Up here, I'm going to declare a variable called video info. It's going to be a dictionary. And I'm going to store the search result, which is the uh, video ID and title, the transcript, and the extracted text, which is the recipe. I'm going to save it to my dictionary using the video ID as the key. And I'm going to return this variable. Now let me add a function to do the actual saving. I'm going to copy and paste that in here. Okay, my save recipe function will take in the video info. To save to Chroma DB, I'm going to use the Chroma collection. That was the, that's Chroma collection here, which points to the recipe database. Call the add function and pass in three parameters. The first one is the documents. In the documents, this is the text that I want to save. Now it's possible to save multiple entries at the same time. That means I can save um, recipe two, three, etc. And that's why documents require a list as an input. In the metadata, I'm going to save information related to my recipe entry. I'm saving the video ID and the title. This also comes in as a list. These are parallel lists. So for example, I can save two recipes at the same time. And that means the second entry of my metadata corresponds to the second entry of my documents. For the IDs, I'm using my video ID. Okay, now that we can save the recipe, let's add a function to query it. 
Okay, my search recipe database function takes in the query and also the max number of results to return. I'm using the same comma collection using the query function. Passing in my query, this also takes in a list. That means I can query for more multiple things at the same time and it will return results for multiple queries. So what the query function returns is this JSON example up here. Whatever I put in the includes means I want to include in my return result. If I don't put anything in the includes, all these entries will be blank. So this lets me control how much information gets returned from the database. So you can see that it's a double list here. That means if I have two queries, this first entry is gonna be the result or the set of results for my first query, the second set of results for my second query. Distance is how close the search result is to my query. Here's the metadata and the actual document text. Down here, all I'm doing is looping through the JSON and displaying the results. So nothing special going on here. So note that I'm using index of zero. I'm hard coding index zero because I'm querying for one thing, which means it's always gonna be this first entry here. So that's why I'm hard coding this index zero. Okay, let's establish these functions. And now I can jump to my search function. So remember I modify my display YouTube results function to return video information. Okay, let me change that up to uh, say salmon. Let's do a search. First result, second result. Now let's say I wanna save this result. I'll come down, let me clear this. New code block, call my save recipe function. I'll pass it the video ID and let's see if it saves. Okay, my recipe is saved. Let me try the search function then. I'll query for salmon search. All right, so because I only have one thing in my database and the default is to return five, I'm gonna see a warning from CoinDB saying that there isn't enough results to return, but uh, it's okay, this is expected. Let me do it one more time. I'll just save this one. I say function. Okay, now if I search for fish, the salmon entry should show up first. Yes, we see the salmon first and then egg second. Now I wonder what happens if I search for chicken. Let's see what's the first result. The first result is egg, second result is salmon. Okay, so now we can search for recipes, extract the recipe from the video and save it into ChromaDB or save the favorite ones into ChromaDB. Uh, one more thing I want to mention is that if you go to Google Drive, if you create a database in Colab and you come here to Google Drive immediately, you're probably not going to see the files reflected. There's some kind of delay between Colab and Google Drive. Don't freak out if you don't see the uh, files. Give it some time and it'll show up. Okay, I think that's it.